is Stitchless TV. Now today we've got a really special guest. We've got the famous Mumtaz from the craftandtravel.com. Hi Mumtaz. Hi Tree. Hi. <laughs> so Mumtaz, tell us about craftandtravel.com. Well it's a blog that I've set up about my two favourite things which is basically crafts and travelling around the world and I thought it would be really nice to look at the different crafts that you can get in different countries because every country has got its own different craft specialities so like in India there's loads of different types of embroidery yeah, in wow. Kenya you've got you know, your specific like Maasai beading so I really like my hobbies literally travelling, going to different countries and looking at what crafts they have going on and I thought it would be really nice to pull that all together and share it in the form of a blog, which is what I do on the website. Which does sound a bit like a dream, doesn't it? <laughs> Good God, lucky you! So tell us about the fabric mm. that we're using today. Today, we're going to make an oversized bum bag or oversized clutch bag for Mumtaz using this fantastic fabric. Have a look at this. So whenever I go away on travels, I always bring back a craft item just to kind of remind me, kind of like memorabilia. So what I decided to do was actually take photos of some of the products that I bought abroad and then use that as my fabric. This is actually some fabric pieces that I bought in India um, from the West Bengal Craft Fair. And I can see them over yeah, there. I brought it along <gasps> and it's wow. such a gorgeous embroidery. Oh. But I thought, you know what, I could use this as something, but by having a photo of it, I kind of oh. get to use it again. Well, you're coordinated as well. <laughs> wow. So I've got that one. Um, and one of my travels I did this year was actually to Central America. I've always been obsessed with like Guatemalan textiles. They have such gorgeous fabrics. Oh, and I saw a street me. seller and she was just walking along the streets with this over her arm and she was selling Gosh. it. And I was just like, wow. I mean, look at the colours on that. Oh, look at all of that. <laughs> That's just like treasure. Oh, just it is yeah. treasure. It is treasure, isn't it? So let's look at some thinner ones yeah. for framing the pictures. So, so this pile of goodies um, I picked up in Green Street at the weekend. So Green Street is where? It's in East London and it's like I a South been. <laughs> I have been. I'm going next week. Yeah. It's a South Asian shopping um, area, lots of clothes shops, lots of fabric shops and lots of places to get trims. So, so I like station? Uh, Upton Park station, Upton Park. district line. District line. Just get off, you're at the edge of uh, Green Street, you just, as soon as you come out, you walk down, and it's just like another world. The whole street I'm is there. filled, I'm there. filled Next with week. goodies. Um, so I picked these up, again, I didn't know what I was going to do with these, I just liked the trims, so I just stocked up on trims. Um, but you know, I'd quite like to sort of maybe incorporate some of these in, into, into okay. the design, possibly. And I'm having a bit of a green face at the minute. I've you are, green aren't you? Green <laughs> Anything green. Shall I tell you what I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. about it? Okay. So you've got really busy, busy fabric, gorgeousness going on. So I, I think it would be nice to start off just by framing it with all of the same. Now, I know okay. you like a kind of eclectic mm -hmm. thing, but I would start off like that. And, and this is a good way for the velvet, because this is actually velvet, we didn't say that, this is velvet. Um, so I think this is a good way for it, and then we can look at these ones mm. maybe falling at the bottom, and maybe just one or two of them having a, a bit of kind of Asian... Okay. Do you think that's all yeah. right? Okay, so that's fine. So we're going to begin by adding the green don't know what we call it, edging, <laughs> trim, uh, trim, <laughs> trim ar around the pictures. And the way that I think is the best way to add these things so that they don't move around is by using a zigzag stitch. So we're going to do that first of all. So look, we did this test piece and I think it looks really luxurious. So we're definitely going to go ahead with the green. So, Mumtaz, can I talk to you while you sew? Of course. Okay. Now, Mumtaz, while she has this um, new blog called craftandtravel.com, craft and travel should be easy to remember. Mumtaz is really well known already because how many books have you got? I've got two books um, that I've called? written. So, the first book I was published in 2006 is called Bollywood Crafts. 
<gasps> and oh. uh, again, I love uh, crafts and I love Bollywood movies. So wow. I put the two so together. Do I, actually. <laughs> and uh, so in that book, you've actually got different projects which are kind of inspired by the films. So there's like um, projects inspired by costumes, the sets, just different themes of wow. the films. Wow, is it very kind of kitsch looking? Yeah, and it goes through all the different decades of Bollywood. So you, you start in the 50s, then you've got films in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, they looked very lovely. different. Technical. Uh, yeah, so it's a project to do with that. And then my second book is 101 plus things to do with glitter. Because again, <laughs> I love glitter. <laughs> So it's a whole yeah. book filled oh, with um, things you can do with glitter. Like um, what? Well, I ended up using 150 varieties of glitter. We had some iron on glitter, which you could use um, for doing like patches on clothing. Oh, really? Um, so like uh, hot... Yeah, that's what awesome. they call it. It's like sheets of glitter that you get. I think it's oh, like okay. a hot fix sheet. Or yes, yeah, sort. hot fix. Uh, so have some wow. of that. Wow. Um, I've also got like glitter toiletries, so like cosmetic glitter in like bath bombs and things. Got edible glitter. And what's that called? And that's called 101 plus things to do with glitter. Because <laughs> 101 projects, but every project um, has got other ideas within it. So okay. you end up with over 200 ideas. Really? Because <laughs> I'm really nice, not only am I going <laughs> to sit down and sew, <laughs> but I'm going to help <laughs> Mum Tess because she's got so much to do. But Mumtaz just said something a minute ago. She said it's a lot easier than she thought it was going to be. Now, do you know why that is? No, I mean, I, I get scared of thick fabrics because I think they're going to get stuck you? in the machine. Oh, no! <laughs> no. <laughs> so this velvet, I thought, well, it's going to be a bit tricky to stitch. Interesting. But oh, usually... Uh, smooth. No, but usually velvet is tricky to sew mm. because of the pile. Yeah. But when it gets printed, yeah. it's basically coating the fabric. So I think that's why it's because I thought it was going to be more difficult to sew as well, but it's basically coated the fabric and flattened the pile. Oh, right. So I reckon that that's why it's easier. Yeah. I need to put some zigzag. So I want to know about other things. Mm. Well, I know I want you to know about <laughs> other things that she does. And one of the things that you do, which I think is just such an amazing thing for the craft community, is the craft make escape. The Makerscape, yeah. yeah. So, um, for the last four and a half years, I've been running a craft night in four London. Four and a half years. Yeah. Oh, you're so <laughs> good. <laughs> and it's called the um, the Make Escape because it's a craft night, literally in the evenings, um, for adults uh, to basically escape your stress of the day after work. It's in the evenings. There's a bar. There's DJs. It's it's kind of you know using craft to escape. But it's and, craft, and it's not sewing, is it? It's, it's craft. all types of craft. So we've done so many different types. I mean, we've done um, jewellery making, we've done sewing, with knitting, crochet, every kind of craft going really, we've tried it out. And um, it's like a drop-in, so anyone can just pop in. Which is brilliant, just come along. You know? We have lovely tutors. You know, like me. Hand, if you've been to, you know, a few of them now. <laughs> Um, we just help and inspire people to have a go at crafts. I mean, most people, on a day-to-day -day basis, that they're not having a chance to craft. So I thought you'd like to have a look. We're doing really well with this embellishing, even though it's taking ages. We've had a bit of a mass production line going on. But look at what we've got so far. So Mumtaz wanted to use some of that stuff from where? Green Street. Street. Green Street, yeah. So this is the stuff from Green Street. And it was very, very easy to sew. Can you see how I've sort of mitered those corners there? But when when you sew it onto the velvet, it does kind of scrunch up a little bit and then you need to press it. So I'm just going to show you that because I think it's quite a good trick. Lots of people are really scared of pressing velvet. I'm a bit scared of pressing velvet, actually. But you know what you can do? If you haven't got one of the special velvet pressing boards that has lots of little pins on it, because then that means you don't flatten the pile, you simply use another piece of velvet. So I just happen to have some velvet lying around, and you don't want your iron to be too hot, and steam it like steam. So I'm pressing it with the velvet on top, and not too much pressure. So I think this stuff really frames it so well, don't you? 
Yeah, it looks like they've actually in photo frames, yeah. especially this one then. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got this webbing stuff that Mum and Dad reckons looks like car seat, but it does actually. <laughs> and these are for adjusting the straps. You can sort of buy these from haberdashery shops. And this is one of the little buckle closure things. So what we've got to do is, we've got to align these exactly where the bag flops over and we've put a little notch there mm -hmm. and we stitch it below the notch. So we're gonna do it on that side and on the other, that side using a straight stitch. Right, so make sure you flap in your little bits on the side now, when you stitch up the bag, you've got to put the fabric right sides together. So my velvet printed fabric is right sides together. My linings are right sides together. <laughs> okay, Mum Taz has only got 10 minutes until she gets her train. She's just <laughs> stitched up that side. She's stitched up the other side. And now she's going to stitch up the bottom. Very, very important that when you do all of this, you leave your zip open. I'm just checking that we actually have. If you don't leave your zip open at this stage, you'll finish your bag and you won't be able to turn it the right way. So, Mumtaz, I want you to line up the bottom, okay? Yep. And sew all the way along the edge, but you've got a little bit of help because you've got this stitch line. So <laughs> just using a straight stitch. So. This is, we've stitched up the bottom, really scary bit. We've got to trim back our bulb. It's always really nerve wracking and scary, but you just got to go for it. So that's where the zip is. And then on the other end, we've got loads of bulb. Trim it really close, but not too close. Now, can you quickly turn it the right way round? Yeah. It's just like doing a sort of pillowcase <laughs> thing. And I'm going to get the iron out because it is very important that we press it. I'm just going to give it a really good shake. Okay, fold that over, dump this a bit. Right, so what happens is, it goes like that. So we've got oh, to wow. put it onto a belty bit. Now, for the ends of the belty bits, they sort of fray. Can you see that? I'm having to crouch down low, okay? <laughs> so we get a match, move the bag so we don't set <laughs> fire to it. Uh, can you just chop off that yeah, bit there? Yeah. And look what happens. When I do this, I just sort of melt the ends and it will stop it from fraying. So any exposed ends, I need to do that too. So I think it's just those two. Wow. So I'm not gonna show you I'm not gonna wow. show you how to do how to put it all together because you might be able to figure it out. But if you want to know, I could do a tutorial just on how to put together the webbing with the belt buckle. It's looking so much like a carpet bag. So that's probably enough, I reckon. <laughs> One last time. Oh, okay. Just be on the safe side. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to see what it looks like on Mom Taz before she whizzes down to the station. <laughs> so look at that! That's just wow. so amazing! It's like the best bag ever. Is it? And yeah, it's oh, incredible. I think it's it lovely. amazing. And let's see and inside. Trimmy bits and oh. Wow, look at that lining. Crazy it's lining. Yeah, it's stunning. I think fit loads of stuff in there. Yeah, you can fit bodies so. in there. Can't you? It's enormous. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, Mum Taz. So That's much, so Jean. brilliant. Wasn't oh. she good? <laughs> so don't forget to take a look at Mum Taz's new blog, which is called Craft and Travel. Travel.com. So look out for it. Thank you so much for watching and see you again really soon. We'll have to do some close-ups on